So when we're looking at a web page, HTML defines the content of the page. CSS, we know, defines the layout and the look. And this new piece, JavaScript, can be used to program behaviors. So there's a couple things you need to know before you start writing JavaScript. And the first one is that any user can disable JavaScript in their browser. So they can check a box, and that'll make all the scripts that you've worked so hard to write not function. Additionally, um, it won't automatically work on some devices. Phones might have it disabled. So it's possible that you are writing something um, and it's not going to work for the user. So you have to be very careful that this is not the thing that your site depends on um, to deliver content. There must be a, an alternate way or um, it must be planned in such a way that the user can still get to your content even if their JavaScript doesn't work. The other thing you need to know is even though it has the word Java in the name, it is not Java. It's a not the same programming language. Um, there is, however, a lot of programming concepts or stuff um, that is very similar. So if you have programmed in Java or actually programmed in any language um, other than that, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's very similar. Okay. So JavaScript itself is what's called a client-side scripting language. And to understand the meaning of that, you first have to understand what um, we mean by client. So a person who's accessing your website through a desktop or their phone or their tablet or whatever, they're using what's called a browser. And so in their browser, they type in you know, the address of the website, and that gets sent to the internet. And domain name servers look up that address and send you to the right computer out there on the internet that's hosting the web pages and the style sheets and the images and all the stuff that's related to the page that they're trying to access and the server sends that stuff back across the internet to the client which is again the browser that's running your code okay so JavaScript runs not on the server out there on, in the internet but on the client's computer um, so it's gonna be running dependent on the speed of their device um, the power of their device, etc. Um, so all the JavaScript gets delivered back to the person who's asking for the website and their own device is what's running the code. Okay. So what kind of things can you actually do with JavaScript? Well, you can handle user interactions. So if they click on particular things or they type a certain value into a text box, you can have some particular event occur. Um, you can use it to mess with the page while they're actually physically looking at it so you can switch up what's inside your HTML elements. You can change the attributes of text and you can swap out images and that kind of thing. Um, you can actually get stuff off the page. You can delete elements. You can create new elements. Um, you can change styles and you can validate data. And um, that last one's actually pretty darn useful. So say you're asking somebody to fill out a form to collect information for some purpose, and you've asked them for like an ID number, and they keep typing um, like a nonsense word in the box. You can actually validate that if they haven't given you, say, a six-digit student ID number, that's actually numeric digits. You can keep them stuck on the page until they give you the correct thing that you want. Um, with the caveat that you keep in mind that if they turned off JavaScript, that validation isn't going to work. Um, and we'll learn that later in their ear. How do you deal with additional validation on the server side um, that's not dependent on what the user has set in their own browser?